Hello and welcome to Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. I'm Sean Burke, joining me is Andy Taylor, Nick Elliott and a very special guest. He's a two-time Premier League winner, a four-time FA Cup winner, a two-time African Nations Cup winner and a member of the legendary Arsenal Invincibles. It's Lauren. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Coming up on this week's show. Good caller didn't understand. He said, look, I have to be tough, so... <laughs> you took it too far. Tackle everyone. I'm a little. I was a little. First, it's month. Everything is new. You know, we came from the south, from the south of Spain. Always 360 days sunny. We moved to <laughs> we moved yeah. to England. It's, uh, you know, every time it was raining. <laughs> but uh, how is your memory of that squad? <laughs> we'll, we'll find out very soon. Anyway, it's a pleasure. I really enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks Frank Lampard has been sacked by Chelsea. The team's poor run of form proved to be the straw that broke the camel's back. Lampard had spent £300 million last summer, which must have infuriated Abramovich right up until he found the same amount of money stuck down the back of his couch. Lauren, I'd love your insight on this because people focus on the recruitments Lampard made last summer, but a lot of them were foreign players coming into a completely new country. Do we take for granted how long it takes to adapt to a new league, especially the Premier League? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Premier League is one of the toughest leagues in worldwide football. It's not easy. The speed of the game, the strength, you uh, you have to be prepared physically uh, and mentally because uh, you play many games in a short period of time, especially in the Christmas period. So the fact that those new players are coming, it's not easy task. Nick, what do you think about this Chelsea team? Do you think we've been... Well, people have been a bit too harsh on them. I think it was a good point that was made just then, obviously, that, um, you know, coming into the new league is difficult because probably the best uh, of Chelsea's new signings has, been, has probably been Ben Chilwell, who obviously already has that Premier League experience. I mean, he's, he's gone to a new club, but it's not, you know, the environment's the same for him when you compare that to like Havertz and Werner. My thing with Lampard's always been the same. If he hadn't scored however many goals he scored for Chelsea... He never would have got the job and it's not it's not really his fault like you know he, I can't really you can't really expect him to say oh no I don't want that job sorry the, the only thing that I don't understand is that if they know obviously we know that Frank Lampard isn't experienced as a manager all of Chelsea knew that Abramovich knew that and when you bring in someone of that little experience you have to go in with the intention of giving them time and there's no way that Lampard could have proven that the level of manager that he's going to be in you know the the season and the bit that they've given him. I guess they're sticking to the Chelsea way. And uh, they're still they're still doing well in the Champions League. I mean, uh, they came here, they beat Sevilla, they qualified to the next round of Champions League. So it's a bit strange. I believe that there is less patience uh, in nowadays than before. Uh, everything go too fast. Mm -hmm. uh, Lauren, uh, how long did it take you to feel fully comfortable in the Premier League? I had a bad period the first six months. First six months, everything is new. You know, we came from the south, from the south of Spain, always 360 days sunny. We moved to, <laughs> we moved yeah. to Valencia, the same place, sunny Mediterranean coast. Uh, we moved to Mallorca, the same. So the fact that it's more, uh, you went to England, is uh, you know, every time it was raining. <laughs> and then I was more concerned about my family ways. And my wife, you know, she was too Spanish. So, mm. and then uh, from then on, everything went uh, easy. I mean, uh, the, the atmosphere was fantastic at Arsenal dressing room, the, the coaching, the manager, the players who run with top players. I mean, it was uh, just the first six months, I would believe that it was a bit harsh. Later on, it was, uh, it was great. Some people have said that Tuchel, what he did at PSG actually wasn't that much of achievement because Everyone is of the assumption if you have Neymar, if you have Mbappe, you already just win the league automatically. But do you think he deserves a bit more credit for, for what he's done at PSG? Or was it just kind of a, a, a tap in for him, you know, that league title? No, absolutely. It is a big credit because it's not easy to win any league in the world. The fact that they've got Neymar and Mbappe, all that, of course, make life easy. But in the meantime, you need to control them. Yeah. The fact that how you control mm. Neymar on those guys, I mean, it's deep, very, very difficult. When you have such a big standard player, big players in that dressing room, the manager have to come across in the right manner in order to control them. Otherwise, 
If you are no, you are those top player, they are no with you. That's it. You finish. I think as well. If you look at the Champions League, obviously um, that's the big one that PSG won, and they did a lot better in that under Tuchel than they previously had. I mean, uh, you know, they've been embarrassed in previous years. You know, the the comeback of Barcelona and the uh, Man United's win when they weren't really doing very well in the league. So, I think that the Champions League shows that perhaps Tuchel got more out of that PSG team oh. than uh, than any of the, the previous managers that were also winning the league. So, you know, I, I know he didn't win it, but he's coming in with a, a certain yeah, it was it, it was one of the ones that get closer to, to win the Champions League. I mean, yeah. if they won the Champions League, I believe that they would have, Mbappe wouldn't like to go to Real Madrid or whatever. They would have stayed there to make them. So, therefore, I was saying that to her, they, they said, big credit because he did absolutely brilliant job. I'm curious to see what uh, Tuchel effect has on the title race. This year seems a bit crazy at the top of the English league. I don't know who's going to be top of the table from one week to the next. I mean, how do, how do you think the season will finish here in, in the Premier League this year, Lauren? Yeah, I believe that uh, Man City, uh, I said the other day that Man City, they, they, I believe that they're going to win the league. Uh, I see Liverpool, they drop a little bit of, of the fact that uh, they lost in the FA Cup. They gained some games. In the Premier League, they've been heavily beaten by teams that you didn't expect, it, like Aston Villa. Uh, they've been that kind of intensity that I like uh, the style of you have club. Uh, uh, attacking the spaces with the fullbacks. To maintain that during many years without many changes in, in the squad, is no easy task to do. So therefore, I believe that uh, Man City, they're going to they're gonna win because I saw the game every day against uh, West Brom. It's unbelievable. They were playing brilliant. Uh, Cancelo on that right hand side. He was making like instead of being at the four at the back, he used to come inside towards the middle to create superlative numbers. Playing without a uh, uh, number nine, it was Mare that was playing that kind of position, like a fake number nine. And then coming across, moving around with uh, Sterling. I mean, uh, it was a, a brilliant display the other day against West Brom. So the fact that um, Guardiola has so many ideas in a, to approach the game in in different manners. I believe they will last strong and they will gonna, they're gonna win the, the Premier League. As always, when we have a guest on the show, we have to chat about their careers as it's not often we have someone on this panel who's achieved more than a Sunday League participation medal. Uh, Lauren, <laughs> as someone who's played under Arsene Wenger and had those famously rough training sessions, do you think modern football has lost that edge a little bit? Let's avoid comparison. Just uh, in our day, we were um, training like a game. Mm-hmm. We were training like a game. I mean, it was we knew that uh, the way you training, and then after you you will extrapolate that kind of training session to the game. So the fact that we did that, uh, we got later on the success because we were thinking just game by game. What was it like every week? I mean, training with, with that Invincible squad in particular, I mean, that must have kept you at your highest possible level, training with people like Henri, Vieira, Bergkamp. I mean, what was it like seeing them in training? Did they get frustrated? Did they fall out with each other? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they were incredibly competitive. <laughs> Absolutely. We were all incredibly competitive. Uh, from Dennis Bergkamp to the, the goalkeeper, we were all wanted to win. We were get, uh, We were... Um, getting upset when you lose in the training session. Nobody wanted to lose. <laughs> so in the meantime, they were all brilliant people. I mean, down to earth, Berkheim was absolutely brilliant guy. Uh, Thierry as well. Patrick was, uh, I mean, uh, amazing. Robert Pires as well. So the fact that I have to challenge every time <laughs> Thierry and Rina, he came to my side <laughs> to the federal training. So that made me better as a defender. <laughs> we have to train with the best every time. And not every time it was facing me on training sessions. So that makes you improve. You have to improve. I was just wondering, you, you know, you were saying there about, um, you know, do you are training and you're playing against Thierry Henry, obviously, sort of directly against him. Did, was there a point of view where, you know, you get to the game at the weekend and you're thinking, well, hang on, you know, I've been, I've been training... I've been playing against Henri all week and now I'm (laughs) against this guy who, no disrespect to whoever you're playing, probably isn't as good as Henri. Do do you take that confidence into the game going, actually, this what I'm doing now is actually easier than what I've been doing in training all week? First of all, I didn't mean it. 
I didn't think about that, but it came naturally. Yeah. When you face Belkam, you face Thierry Henry because he used to come from that side to face me every single day <laughs> training. Uh, and then instantly, mentally, it comes to your head. So it's not uh, that you do it in purpose, yeah. but you have the best players against you every single day. So that makes you improve. It comes naturally, instantly. And I remember that game that we played against Man United that, that we won the double, the, the first double in 2001. That was a brilliant game. After I had to face Ryan Giggs, he was quicker. It was fierce, fast. It was technically it was one of the best players I ever faced in my life, if it's not the best during games. But I managed to uh, did a fantastic game defensively because I had Thierry every single day. <laughs> so that came naturally. There's a story about uh, Colo Torre's trial at Arsenal. I just wanted to know to ask somebody who was likely there. <laughs> did he accidentally slide tackle Arsene Wenger? Is that true? <laughs> That's absolutely true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the reaction like? <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, it was the time that the Wenger wanted to, to make Polo be a bit tougher. You have to be tough because the Premier League is, you know, this is tough, it's quick, it's speed. Uh, you have to be strong, <laughs> you have to be strong. Come on, Colo, come on, Colo. So, by the time Wenger took the ball, he just went behind him and he tackled him with the two legs. <laughs> <laughs> I used Wenger fall over and uh, we were all laughing because uh, Wenger took it in a nice way. He was looking at Colo and said, Colo. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all just laughing because it was a funny, funny moment. Funny moment. Cool. Colo didn't understand. He said, look, I have to be tough. So <laughs> <laughs> He took it too far to tackle everyone. Colo was unbelievable. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for our bonus video this week where we preview the Arsenal versus Man United match with Lauren, a man who knows a thing or two about that fixture. I was just going to say, you know, we were talking earlier about the, uh, the Lampard situation. You were saying how, um, you know, clubs don't have much patience these days, which is probably true. Do, do you think it's possible that we'll ever see a top club employ a manager for as long as Wenger, you know, had their Arsenal job ever again? Or do you think that no matter how good managers are these days, that they'll they're only destined for you know three four years. I, I believe that it will be difficult to see coaches like Wenger or Ferguson for twenty years in a club. It will be very very difficult nowadays because so much pressure, so much pressure, less patience, and we want everything now. Not only in England, uh, in Spain, but in Spain, <laughs> the situation that we see now in England. It was 20 years, 30 years ago when I was playing, it was like that here. I mean, big pressure in, in, in every single club. Even it, it doesn't have to be the bigger club. Small clubs here in Spain, they were like that. Well, after 10 games, we don't play well, why not? That's how they manage it. That kind of culture has been extrapolated into England now. I mean, now there's less patient. I mean, uh, I feel this is the way we have to stick on it. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned Arsene Wenger being a man of few words. I just read his autobiography a few weeks ago, which is a really interesting read. But one thing I found interesting was uh, the Invincible season. He spends about like 10 pages on it. And like he, he says all he needs to say and then moves on. But arguably that's his most impressive achievement at the club. But for you as a player there, were you was it in your head at all as the season went on? I didn't think about... Uh, the invincible at all. Mm -hmm. I just went by, game by game, training session. I was training my house, training my house, and this is my that was my life. I was living for football for Arsenal. I didn't care about anything else, and uh, I didn't think about maybe some of the players. I don't believe the majority of the player they didn't think about the invincible. They were I believe that they will all concentrate. Game by game, step by step. Uh, therefore, I believe we, we had a success. In the last games, when you get there, the last small, especially the last game, uh, and then you, you, you know that we were close to achieve something in, uh, where that had never been done in, in the Premier League. Can you tell us about the, the dressing room for that, that last, uh, you know, the last game of that season when you just had to avoid defeat? Was there, was there any talk about it in half time or was it all just about? you know, 
keeping focusing on the things that you've done well all yeah. season? Focusing on the game, focusing in the, in that uh, moment because I believe that we, we start losing that game, is it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was then, a Dickoff, uh, we, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, yeah. So then people, you know, uh, we we were up in uh, because in many many games in that period, uh, uh, invincible season, we started losing the game, and then Wenger was unbelievable and on the speech uh, in the. In the in the dressing room, five minutes of silence, and then he came across with uh, the the talking points, and uh, what he did it just happened on the game, so it was brilliant. Uh, you also won an FA Cup at Portsmouth, correct? Hmm. Was how was that the switch over from there from Arsenal to Portsmouth? I mean, it still went okay by the sound of it, but was that a was that a big shock to the system? It was a big shock, and, and, and I wasn't on my mentally, I wasn't on my best. I uh, have to pay, say sorry to Portsmouth fans and also especially for Harry Remner because I didn't mentally I was, you know, uh, you switch off uh, a little bit. I wasn't the same Lauren at Arsenal that at mm. Portsmouth because I switch off. Once you switch off, it's difficult to get back. But I have to say that we have a, a fantastic team, Portsmouth, and also the fans. I mean, uh, the Pompey fans, mm. they are one of the best in England football, for sure. I mean, the the, the way they, they support the team since mid one until then, this is just amazing. I love Paul Sportsman and also Harry. Mm. Harry, you can laugh the, the, the whole <laughs> You can laugh and uh, it's a funny man. You can, you know, he take the best out of you. He touch your heart. That's Harry Renner. Is he, is he a bit of a joker as well? Is he, is he as yeah. kind of funny as we see him in, in real life? Yeah, yeah he's unbelievable. <laughs> You can laugh the whole day. I remember the day that we, we were playing at Everton, right? And in the first half, we were losing. I think 2 0, and then we were playing terrible. Like Everton were on top of us. And then by the time to get out uh, to start the second half, just hurry, hurry, lie down. <laughs> he's, he's red, his face came red. He said, Guy, what happened, boss? And he says, no, I'm not going to go out. I'm staying here. I'm not going to go out. He says, why, boss? Because I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> You're fantastic. <laughs> You're a fantastic team. You And then you played so terrible. So I'm not going to go. I'm staying here. I'm staying here. So I say, come on, boss. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> you, you were laughing. So he wanted us to react because he knew that if we didn't react, we could have ended up losing 5 nil or 7 6 nil. So it was an unbelievable coach. Right, now that we're warmed up, it's time for our four to score challenge that Betway have set for our guests. So, Lauren, I need you to name as many of your teammates from the Invincible season as possible in 90 seconds. Uh, and just to be generous, it's not just league winners. So it's, it's anyone who played that year, including in the Cups. But uh, how is your memory of that squad? <laughs> we'll, we'll find out very soon anyway. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. All right, and the time starts now. Edu, Gilberto, Colo, Viera, Ashley Cole, Thierry Henry, Belkam, Canu, Lehman, Sol Campbell, um, Paolo, Penham, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Martin Q, uh, oh, la, 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 la. the yep. bench, the bench. Robert Pires, Freddy Lumber. Mm-hmm. Uh, was in the bench. Ah, <laughs> 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 oh. few. There's a few young lads that you've missed. Yeah. Oh. That's a pennant. No. Uh, ah. Uh, Ashley Cole. Cole. Yeah, you said him. Oh. Pretty decent. Couple Spanish of French ones. defenders. Ah, Pascal Sigan. Mm-hmm. Pascal Sigan and uh, who's this one? Uh, quick. <laughs> Can get more. Come on. <laughs> the left back. Giovanni wasn't there, so um, oh. left back. Uh, Dushni. Uh, 
No, he wasn't there anymore, according to this list. That's time. That is time. All right, you got 15 answers there. Congratulations, Lauren. 15. Was there any ones that annoyed you that you didn't, didn't remember? Yeah, yeah, Clinchy, all of them. And also, Jose Antonio, especially Jose Antonio Reyes. So the fact yeah. that, yeah, lovely guy, down to earth. Uh, I mean, uh, here from the South. I mean, yeah, sorry for that. If you would like to take part in the Betway Four to Score Challenge this weekend, just try to predict the first four goal scores in the fixtures designated by Betway. Get it right and you could win £50,000. I nearly forgot to ask you as well, obviously given um, your knowledge of uh, the Spanish League, um, Martin Odegaard, uh, mm. what, are we, what can we expect from him and, and what can he offer to Arsenal? Do you think he'll come straight in? Could he be a starter for, for Arteta? Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's, he's a top player. He's a top, top player. If he managed to get settled, because one of the biggest problem of Real Madrid and Olegan is because he has to replace Modric. And in Real Madrid, there's a big pressure there. He only played two, the first two games against Real Sociedad and Betis. And then later on, he didn't play, he played against Villarreal. So the fact that a youngster need, in my opinion, there is many Matthijs, there is many uh, different opinions that I respect. But youngsters have to play five, six consecutive games in order to feel subtle and feel as he did against Real Sociedad uh, when he was uh, in Real Sociedad. They give him six, seven games in order to improve. Therefore, we saw all they got play, playing so brilliantly uh, with Real Sociedad. And also the system, I believe, is suits him because uh, Bateta played that 4-2 in the middle, 3-1, 4-2-3-1. If you play that 4-3-1, you have to play him behind the strike in that three position, but in the middle. Sometimes in Real Madrid, they play 4-4-2, but as a diamond, he was behind the strike, but sometimes he come to receive the ball too deep, as we saw against uh, Villarreal. Uh, Real Madrid, Villarreal, Real Madrid. All the guy used to come to receive the ball close to the two central back. This is not the position of, of Olega. Olega have to play high up on the pitch. In this system, 4-2-3, behind the strike, and then he will be a real threat, as we see the, um, when he was a Real Sociedad. He can score goals. He can give the last pass in the last third. He's a top player. I mean, he needs six, six, seven consecutive games. He will, he will see a Arsenal have a spot on real talent, and we need that kind of player as well in order to face all the competition. No, that's exciting. That's yeah. really exciting. Well, that's all from us, folks. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Dream Team Coach TV, brought to you by Betway. And big thanks to Lauren for joining us on the show. Good luck with your dream teams, and we will see you again next week.